pain is pain felt in the back that usually originates from the muscles, nerves, bones, joints or other structures in the spine. Back pain may have a sudden onset or can be a chronic pain. It can be constant or intermittent, stay in one place or radiate to other areas. It may be a dull ache or a sharp or piercing or burning sensation. The pain may radiate into the arms and hands as well as the legs or feet and may include symptoms other than pain. These symptoms may include tingling, weakness or numbness. In the UK, acute lower back pain is one of the most common reasons for GP visits. About 9 out of 10 adults experience back pain at some point in their life, and 5 out of 10 working adults have back pain every year. In this programme, we look at the latest innovations in back care and hear the views of family GP and television personality Dr Chris Steele, Dr Brian Hammond and Dr Adam al Kashi from Back Care, the charity for healthier backs, Catherine Goodyear, Chief Operating Officer of the British Osteopathic Association. Dr. Dawn Carnes from the National Council for Osteopathic Research. And osteopath Tanith Ham explains why choosing the right bed has a significant effect on back pain relief. It's extremely important to look after your back because really, you know, you, you've got your back for the rest of your life and you want to keep those joints uh, a, a, as supple as possible, as strong as possible, uh, because as you get older, you know, joints will degenerate and the discs between the bones will degenerate, so you need to look after them. When you're younger, you need to have correct posture, sit in the right position and learn to lift things from lower down in the correct way. Back pain doesn't kill, it tortures, destroying lives and livelihoods. It accounts for half of all chronic pain and is the leading cause of sickness absence from work. The financial burden of back pain is enormous. Every day it costs the National Health Service £1.3 million. Every day it costs £13 million in disability benefits. And every day it costs the UK economy 37 million, that's a staggering 19 billion pounds every year. Back Care is the UK's National Back Pain Association. It was founded over 40 years ago in 1968 by an industrialist, Stanley Grundy CBE, who suffered back pain but was dissatisfied with the lack of support he found available. The charity's mission is to lessen the burden of back and neck pain on sufferers, their families, the National Health Service and the economy in general. Around 30 million adults in the UK will suffer back pain this year. Of those, 10 million will still be in pain in 12 months and 6 million will have been out of work for three months or more as a result. But one of the largest challenges that we face at Back Care is that society in general doesn't really recognise the full scale and impact of back pain. And so we find ourselves essentially championing an invisible cause. The way that we combat this is through our educational campaigns. One of our largest educational campaigns to date has focused on excessively heavy school bags and the impact that this has upon the spinal health of children. This year, we're launching a new campaign uh, focused on the construction industry, which generates 30,000 new back injuries every year. And because we're passionate about our campaigns, we've teamed up with world leaders in manual handling training. To provide a solution, it's best to understand the problem. And we came across two major problems with manual handling in industry. First, the training was historically just too general. And secondly, full of myths and fallacies. For example, bend legs and back straight. Have you ever tried it? Because that's the perception. And they realised they couldn't do that, so they did what they thought was best. And it became a bit of a tick in the box. What we've been able to do is bring a new tool to the table. And it's based on Olympic weightlifting. You see, Olympic weightlifting is anatomically and mechanically perfect. And there's people my body weight now putting in excess of 200 kilos above the head. And if you think of the tonnage they shift on a daily basis, it's huge without injury because they're technically sound. And what we've been able to do is bring that into industry with those principles and adapt them to any given situation or task. Consequently, it massively reduces the pressure on the body on a daily basis and therefore the risk of injury. But the best part is the buy-in from the staff themselves. Because the programmes are so bespoke and very hands-on, they can physically feel the difference there and then. 
And you know when you talk about this behavioural change, there's nothing focuses the mind like pain. Well, that hurts me and that doesn't. So which way are they going to do it? So you can change bad habits to good habits. And that's so important. We have a multi-elemental approach with a behaviour change in a full support programme and therefore zero accidents is doable, it's been done. For the construction industry, working with the HSC and a world leading insurance company and now Backcare, we've actually tailored a programme where we brought these principles into every major task. And what that does will massively reduce the pressure on the body doing them and it will reduce back pain. The other major issue that we face at back care is resistance to change. We find this quite commonly amongst both patients and healthcare professionals. And if history tells us anything about the future, it's that science and knowledge is always evolving. So what's true today is almost guaranteed to become inadequate or obsolete by tomorrow. For example, 25 years ago, if you suffered from chronic back pain and were sent for an MRI scan, if the scan showed a herniated disc, this would be assumed to be the cause and he'd almost certainly be referred for surgery. However, since then, studies have shown that herniated discs are a normal sign of aging and are almost equally common in people with and without back pain. It's for this reason that we have a very keen research interest, uh, whether that's funding new research projects or simply working to raise awareness around new methods that are bringing new results. I specialise in a pioneering approach to chronic pain that's based on an updated understanding. The acute pain of an injury is an unpleasant but important biological signal indicating tissue damage. However, we're beginning to understand that where there is no underlying physical disease, such as cancer or rheumatoid arthritis, chronic pain is actually created by the central nervous system rather than the bodily location where the pain is felt to be. Therefore, by addressing the central nervous system directly via its software, or in other words, the mind, we can now achieve complete resolution of chronic back pain, no matter how severe or long-standing. This is a very different outcome from pain treatment or management-centred approaches and has been borne out by case after case that I see in my clinic. Through my practitioners association, I now train health professionals to integrate this approach into their own work. And through our collaboration with Backcare, we're setting up a formal research study to demonstrate these results. We depend upon the generosity of donors and fundraisers to make this all happen. And none of our achievements to date would have been possible without them. The best way to get involved is to become a member of the charity. We offer memberships for both patients and professionals, as well as corporate partnerships. Back pain strikes without warning. Tomorrow it could be you or one of your loved ones. Help us stop back pain from destroying someone's life today. Please send a donation or become a member. Most of us are working eight hours a day. And if you're working in an office where you're sitting, that's a lot of time, maybe in a chair. That's really not probably the best design for a sitting posture. You know, when you're sitting, the, your back should be slightly arched, your shoulders should be up rather than slouched over. Slouching over is an unnatural, unhealthy position to be in. So it's extremely important that you know, you've know you got the, the right type of uh, designed chairs. Also, get up and walk about during the day. Don't, don't keep sitting there for hours on end. You know, you've been sitting on your backside coming in on the car or the, the tube or the train. You're sitting all day, you drive back home, you're sitting in a soft uh, chair all through the night. These are all situations um, that uh, are uh, making you end up in a position where your spine is not in the perfect posture. And of course it's so easy to slouch. Don't slouch. Think of your spine as, a, as an erect column. The British Osteopathic Association, the BOA, is an independent organisation representing osteopaths working both within the National Health Service and the private health sector in the UK. It's a not-for-profit organisation which exists to promote osteopathy to um, government, to the national health, to the media and to the general public. Um, and in particular to show osteopathy's efficacy in treating musculoskeletal conditions. Osteopathy has a very high patient satisfaction rate and a very, very good patient safety record. Research was done by the National Council for Osteopathic Research and it showed that nearly 70% of patients come by recommendation of other patients. Osteopathy is normally um, associated with, with spinal 
conditions and most um, people associate osteopaths with low back pain. However, osteopathy is, a, is, a, is greater than this. It's a, it, it looks at the biomechanics and, uh, and joint function of all joints and, and most osteopathic assessments will uh, look at the peripheral joints. So there'll be a, there'll be a, a full holistic assessment of all the body parts and how they contribute to the spine. For example, if someone has a shoulder problem, um, you have coupled motion between the thoracic area, the, in between your shoulder blades and your shoulder joint. So if someone has, a, a for example, a, a tendon problem in their shoulder, whether it's cause or effect, there will often be an area of restriction in the, in the mid-back which needs to be addressed uh, in, in, in the whole treatment package of the patient's uh, shoulder condition. This is then combined with increasing the mobility of the area is then combined with rehabilitation exercises uh, and a long-term treatment uh, program to help prevent further episodes of pain. Osteopathic techniques uh, tend to be um, viewed by the public as being manipulation based, i.e. joint clicking, etc. However, osteopathy is far more than this. Osteopathy is really more about soft tissue techniques, like lots of different types of massage techniques, stretching techniques, what you call muscle energy techniques to improve the length of muscles. They also, um, a lot of osteopaths now incorporate other therapies like acupuncture, uh, as well as doing the normal mobilization and manipulation techniques. Manipulation is um, taught um, as, a, as the primary treatment base for osteopathic treatment. Hence, um, there's a four-year training, so it's an in-depth training to provide the, the most safe, gentle care. Osteopathy treats a wide range of, um, of, of age groups from young children to elderly patients. Obviously, there's a, um, when you're dealing with, with young children, you're looking mostly as an observational type of approach. You don't necessarily do much intervention, but it's an assessment uh, and prevention strategy, often exercise-based, uh, looking at uh, helping children prevent problems later in life, particularly when you're talking about postural problems, educating children to learn that good posture equals good mechanics and that that should be installed deep in their subconscious so that they try and carry that through into their adult life. Um, when you're dealing with elderly patients, obviously with joint restrictions and natural wear and tear changes, of, of arthritic changes, you can still treat elderly patients, but you have to modify your techniques so they're much gentler. Um, and, and elderly patients can benefit hugely, particularly if treatments combined with advice concerning exercises and, again, postural um, self-help routines. The National Council for Osteopathic Research was set up to explore the evidence base for osteopathy and techniques used by osteopaths within their treatments. In the last 10 years there's been some good quality research that's been done looking at osteopathy and techniques used within osteopathy and this research has shown that there's some positive benefits for people seeking osteopathic treatment. Now this research has been um, primarily clinical trials and this is where we compare people who've had osteopathy or osteopathic techniques applied to them and those who haven't and those who've had osteopathy tend to fare better in terms of pain reduction, functional ability and general well-being. When a patient visits an osteopath normally the consultation time is anywhere between 45 to 60 minutes so it's a very comprehensive assessment Essentially, um, the, the first part of the uh, assessment is taking a, a traditional case history, which will be an in-depth um, discussion about the patient's current symptoms, their past history, um, the, what aggravates their pain, whether they get night pain, etc. Um, and then um, there's a more general health question, asking them about any previous illnesses, operations, any previous trauma accidents. Once the case history has been taken, the patient is then um, assessed both for active and passive mobility to see what range of motion the patient has, what produces the pain, and then a series of orthopedic tests which are carried out assessing and trying to determine the source of the, the pain, what is actually causing the pain. Most osteopaths um, will also uh, incorporate um, diagnostic uh, investigation, whether it be MRI scans, CT scans, x-rays. Uh, I'm in the fortunate position that I work in a here at the Putney Clinic in a large GP centre. We have 21 GPs and a private hospital on the top floor. So most of our patients have been through a diagnostic sieve 
uh, and they often accompany me with uh, appropriate diagnostic investigation. Um, so that greatly assists the whole treatment process. There's a greater interaction between osteopaths and the general medical profession, so very often uh, regular osteopaths also uh, have additional diagnostic information. Once the active and passive um, assessment has been um, commenced, then the um, patient is physically examined, um, and after a careful explanation to the patient about the cause of their symptoms, then a treatment plan is explained detailing the plan of treatment, uh, the rehabilitation process, uh, posture and ergonomics, and anything else which may be relevant. Treatment then um, will consist, depending on the diagnosis, of massage, gentle manipulation, mobilization, and, and other additional treatment modalities. The patient is then uh, often given a short course of treatments, uh, which the information then relayed to the, to the patient's doctor, by a letter, or to, to whoever the referring person uh, is. And then the patient is given a, a, a treatment plan and uh, an exercise program. Um, I actually slipped over onto mice when I was away on holiday. Um, at the time when, when, I, when, I, when I fell, I didn't actually go for, for treatment. Um, I just assumed it would get better. I probably waited a number of weeks, too many weeks, um, before I ended up going to see my GP and then going to see a physio. I spent six to seven months um, seeing a physio, and whilst they gave me lots of great exercises to do, it didn't actually resolve the underlying issue associated with my neck. Um, and that coupled with the fact sitting at a desk um, was actually making the situation worse. I was often finding my shoulders kind of hunched up around my ears, um, and I'd, even to the point at which in certain mornings I'd find it difficult, frankly, to get out of bed. Um, it was at that stage, actually, I got a referral to see a spinal consultant um, who did a series of tests, obviously, to ensure that there was no um, issue with my actual kind of spine that had been damaged um, through my accident, through my fall. Um, and when we established that that wasn't the case, it was then I was referred to see, a, to see an osteopath. And I have to say, from that point forward, that's where things really actually um, changed. Um, I think it was probably about six to eight treatments um, was what it took to actually get my neck mobile again. Um, and it enabled me really to then start having a more normal kind of quality of life and a quality of life that I actually kind of enjoyed before, before the accident. Um, I was, you know, I was able to go back to playing tennis, to running, all these things previously I was unable to do because just of the pain kind of running through, through, up through my neck. The risk of experiencing a serious or major adverse reaction to osteopathy is extremely low. And when I say major or serious, I'm talking about death, stroke or permanent incapacity. Um, the risk of, for example, taking um, an anti-inflammatory medication over a long-term period for osteoarthritis is much more risky than having osteopathic treatment. However, some people will report mild adverse reactions such as soreness after an osteopathic treatment, but these normally resolve within 24 hours of the treatment. When a member of the public is seeking out an osteopath for, for treatment, I would recommend that they contact the British Osteopathic Association for a list of registered osteopaths. Fortunately now patients are protected by law as, the, um, as a registered osteopath is only allowed to practice if they're registered with the General Osteopathic Council uh, and uh, are fully accredited. Um, I would also recommend that uh, a patient uh, involves their GP and in their, uh, if, if they have back pain and that they inform the GP that they are going to um, see an osteopath for treatment and uh, the osteopath will also um, co communicate with the GP and relay any findings and, and a treatment uh, plan. When you consult an osteopath, I would recommend that you find out what their specialist area of interest is and whether that's appropriate for your type of problem. For example, there are osteopaths who specialize in children, there are osteopaths who spe uh, specialize in, in pregnant women, and there are osteopaths who specialize in sports injuries, and then you have your general osteopaths who will cover a whole range of of musculoskeletal problems. Osteopathy is a state regulated profession. Now when you go and see an osteopath you're afforded the same protections seeing an osteopath as you would be seeing your general practitioner. If you have any concerns about the osteopathic treatment that you've had then your first point of call is to try and resolve the issue with the osteopath who's given you the treatment. 
If, however, your concerns remain unresolved, then of course you can go to the General Osteopathic Council for resolution. Osteopathy is available on the NHS in some parts of the country, but it is a bit of a postcode lottery and the BOA is lobbying to have that, that um, amount improved. The recent Any Qualified Provider process that the government has introduced has had successes for osteopaths and people should, in those areas should be able to have osteopathy available on the NHS. We, we really want to push for this because um, there's about 30% of doctors' appointments are to do with musculoskeletal conditions that osteopathy can help. Uh, and it would just um, make a big difference to the burden on the state if, if people could have osteopathic treatment. Osteopathy is a profession that has huge advocacy among its patients, with many patients recommending osteopaths to their friends and family. Um, it is becoming more widely accepted as a mainstream health um, provider, but this is something we are working towards to try and get it accepted in more parts of the country. Um, we're very proud that osteopaths were part of the 2012 Olympic and Paralympic team in the medical village. Um, and in fact, one of the medical directors was a, a, an osteopath and a doctor. If anyone would like more information about osteopaths or osteopathy, please visit the BOA's website. I think to protect your, your back, your spine, your bed's important. You, know, you spend eight hours every single day lining in your bed. And it's, it's eight hours of not total inactivity, but you're not very active while you're asleep. So if you've got a mattress that's far too soft, it's not supporting your spine, then th that's causing undue stress or strain on those many, many joints in the vertebral column during those eight hours. So, you know, if you talk to specialists, they will tell you you should have a firm mattress that's giving support, but yet it's still comfortable. And of course, the term orthopedic bed is the term that many people understand. Dorso UK supplies a unique patented bed system which has been designed to help people sleep without back pain. With over 10,000 beds already sold, we have many people who can confirm that the Dorso has helped them sleep with many painful back conditions such as rheumatism, arthritis, hernia pain, disc problems and many other painful conditions. The Dorso bed system was invented by René Van Ramdonk, a Belgian design engineer who owns and runs the company HandyMove International. HandyMove have over 30 years experience of designing back care products which help and improve the lives of wheelchair users throughout the world. The principle behind the door so and what makes it so unique is that it's the bed base as well as the mattress that provides upward support to the spine. The key feature of the product is the wooden slatted base which operates via 26 hydraulic pumps. Now these together with the specially designed mattress ensure that the back is kept in the optimal position while you sleep at night regardless of the sleeping position you lie in. This makes sure that the back is able to rest and recover and recuperate overnight so that when you get up the next day, the back is ready to take on the stresses and strains of the day. The amount of sleep we get impacts so much on our daily lives to the extent that if you're getting enough good quality sleep, it makes everything else seem so much more positive. The Dorso bed system was designed to provide a solution to a back pain problem. Here at Dorso, we believe that a mattress alone can't provide the necessary support to your back. This is why we've developed the Dorso Intelligent Bed System, which is a combination of the hydraulic pumps together with a specially designed mattress to provide the optimum support. The unique upward support provided by the Dorso Intelligent Bed System ensures that your body is kept in the correct anatomical position at all times, whatever your sleeping position. This means that you have better blood circulation, lymphatic flow, your muscles are more relaxed, you sleep deeper, and you wake up feeling more refreshed in the morning. The Dorso Slatted Base consists of 26 maintenance-free hydraulic pumps. These are interconnected and can adjust the whole slatted base six centimeters up or down. The Dorso mattress has been specially designed to take into account the movements of the slatted base and to work together with the hydraulic pumps. An ordinary mattress would not be able to provide this flexibility. At Dorso, we use a high density, specially formulated cold foam. This has many qualities, including excellent ventilation. This, unlike other mattresses, can actually prevent overheating as well. The luxurious mattress cover and mattress add the comfort to the slatted bed base. This makes sleeping on a dorsal bed so wonderful. To 
try a door so customers can come either to our showroom or alternatively we can go to our customers with our mobile showroom. This can either be taken to our customers' homes or to clinics. It's important to point out that a dorso bed system isn't just for those suffering with back problems. It can help other medical conditions or simply just to look after your back. We have a number of athletes who also sleep on our bed system, including a four-time Ironman winner. A dorso bed is not just an investment for your back, it's an investment in your overall well-being. My problem is that I'm loose-jointed. It seems to have a variety of names, including lax ligaments and hypermobility. It means that the ligaments, which would normally stabilise the joints, aren't tight enough to hold the joints still, and so my muscles have to work twice as hard. Before the dorso bed arrived, when I lay in bed, I needed to support my joints. So I had seven pillows or cushions supporting various parts of my body, depending on whether I was lying on my back or on my side. This resulted in a very disturbed sleep pattern because every time I turned over in bed, it necessitated a complete rearrangement of all the pillows. Otherwise, I would wake up in the morning with aches and pains in my back, my neck, my shoulders, my hips, my knees or my ankles. Having the dorso bed means I no longer need most of my pillows because it allows my shoulders and hips to sink into the mattress whilst still supporting my spine. And that means I get a far calmer night's rest. Before I got my dorso bed, when the alarm went off in the mornings, I used to get up straight away because I was so physically uncomfortable by then that I needed to get up. With the dorso bed, I am perfectly comfortable when the alarm goes off and I'm rather reluctant to get up now. Quite recently, I was unwell and I had to spend two full days in bed. And to my astonishment and delight, I was perfectly comfortable throughout. I was miserably poorly, but physically very comfortable. And for the first time in my life, I could say that being ill had been a pleasure. Therapy can help back pain, but I tell my patients that having the right bed is important. A bed that provides both comfort and support to the spine can help to reduce back pain. It allows the structures in the spine to really rest and then it rejuvenates the back during the night. A good bed system with an ergonomic mattress and a slatted base can, can ensure good and correct support of the entire spine and it can yield a lot of relaxation to the spine as well. A good example of that would be the dorsal bed system. The ideal sleep position would be with you lying on your side or on your back. This can be difficult for people with low back pain or with shoulder pain. And a bed that gives you the proper support and yields where it needs to yield can make a big difference and help a lot. I can feel by lying on the dorso that the back is fully supported, whether I'm lying on my back or on my side. In my opinion, the significant relief provided by the bed system can help patients suffering from back pain to sleep much more comfortably. Having back pain when I was in my early 20s, I appreciate the fact that it can really affect people's lives, being in pain all the time. I believe that a good mattress and a good bed is really important for people to have less pain throughout the day. If they can manage to get a good night's sleep with less pain on a night, then that really affects them during the day and it sets them up for a better quality of life. With the dorso beds, it keeps all their spine in line and it helps their posture. Most of my work is in sport and I was lucky enough to work at both the Olympic and Paralympic Games at London 2012 and working with the athletes I can completely appreciate the fact that they need a good night's sleep to aid their recovery which in turn enhances their performance. Making sure that they're sleeping on a good bed such as the dorso helps to keep their spine in alignment, making sure that their hips aren't closing off allowing good circulation so all the lactic acids going back up to the heart and being sort of rejuvenated so that the next day when they get up they're the best that they can be to make sure that they perform well. The Back Care Charity states that approximately 80% of all adults in the UK will at some point in their lives suffer from back pain. This makes investing in a good bed so important. The Dorso Bed System can help people sleep without back pain because it's been designed by back care specialists specifically for people who suffer from back pain. The management goals when treating back pain are to achieve maximal reduction in pain intensity as rapidly as possible and to restore the individual's ability to function in everyday activities. I'm Georgina Burnett and you've been watching Back to Health in the NHS.